fellow countrymen and women. I joined the new patriotic party at the very beginning of its establishment as a founding member, believing in its core values and the long-standing traditions of its antecedents, predicated on the principles of fairness, equity, probity, accountability, and transparency. I have devoted the best part of my professional career to serving the party, and I still believe in the vision of the founding fathers of the party. However, the MPP, as it exists now, has very little resemblance to the party that I joined in 1992 and helped to <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. The party has been hijacked by a selected group of party leaders and elders, government appointees, behind, behind the curtain power brokers and some unscrupulous party apparatchiks. The concept of an independent candidate becoming the president of the Republic of Ghana, though Novel will be the most innovative and revolutionary development in Ghana's political history. <coughs> it will indeed be a watershed development in Ghana. Although similar examples of this model have been practiced successfully in countries such as Benin in Africa and other political jurisdictions. In a country like Ghana, that is currently embroiled in divisive political turmoil, an independent candidate who becomes president will be a bipartisan and honest broker amongst different political parties and will bring healing and reconciliation to our body politic. <laughs> Ministers and other key government officials will be appointed from all parties and shall also include and, and shall also include individuals who are apolitical but have a demonstrable and proven track record, record proven track record of performance in their field of specialization. Fellow countrymen and women, what Ghana needs now is a new leader and not a new political party. The four dominant themes for this change agenda will be pursued, which will be pursued by the movement are as follows. One, change the political status quo by moving Ghana beyond the duopoly of the two main political parties, the New Patriotic Party and the National Democratic Congress. This this will break divisive partisanship in governance in Ghana. Two, promote the establishment of a government of national unity, which would include people from all walks of life, irrespective of their political, religious, ethnic affiliations. Rich, rich or poor, able-bodied or physically challenged, young or old women and men. This will allow for effective and inclusive participatory governance. The movement will lead the formation of a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. <laughs> Number three, build consensus on a national development agenda which will introduce a new paradigm shift that moves Ghana from growth and stability to economic transformation. This paradigm shift will be driven by my great transformational plan, GTP for Ghana, which puts the private sector and the business community at the center of our national development efforts. Four, 
inspired behavioral and attitudinal change in the people of Ghana. On the 26th of August this year, I participated in the Super Delegates Conference to shortlist the 10 aspirants who had filed their nominations to contest in the primaries. I was selected as one of the five candidates to contest for the main presidential primaries scheduled for the 4th of November 2023. Fellow countrymen and women, after carefully analyzing the results of the Superdelegates Conference, I issued a press statement on the 6th of September this year, declaring my intention to exit the process leading to the presidential primaries. In the run-up to the Superdelegates Conference, the National Council of the Party made some of the most controversial and contentious decisions in the history of our party. They rejected a petition signed by nine out of the ten aspirants requesting for the Superdelegates Conference to be held in one location, as well as to allow each delegate at the conference to nominate five persons instead of one in line with the provisions of our party's constitution. In my humble and considered opinion, the decisions of the National Council were both unmeritorious and unconstitutional. To make matters worse, it was absolutely clear, as I indicated in my press statement of 6th of September this year, that the Superdelegates Conference was strategically and tactically skewed and maneuvered in favor of one particular aspect. The level of intimidation and monetization that characterized the conference is unprecedented in the history of internal elections of our party. After carefully analyzing the results of the Superdelegates Conference, I issued a press statement on the 6th of September this year, declaring my intention to exit the process leading to the presidential primaries. In the run-up to the Superdelegates Conference, the National Council of the Party made some of the most controversial and contentious decisions in the history of our party. They rejected a petition signed by nine out of the ten aspirants requesting for the Superdelegates Conference to be held in one location, as well as to allow each delegate at the conference to nominate five persons instead of one in line with the provisions of our party's constitution. Well, here we are on the first belt of our big stories, and um, we're focusing on Ala Chemating and this new movement. He is saying, uh, we, don't need a, uh, we need a new leader, not a new political party. But uh, with what he's doing, is that not the semblance of a new political party, so to speak, since he's going independent? But that's a caucus he is creating uh, there. Well, I don't know whether Alan Chemating has not been meeting up with Davido or jamming to his song, Unavailable, because he's basically saying, uh, I'm unavailable. They know they see me, so they don't see him, so he's unavailable and he's moving away. He's going to do his own thing. What do you make of it? Uh, there are some who have said this is outright political suicide, second time, and that it's a one-way ticket away from the NPP. But others have also said, with the way things are shaping up in the party, this was his only option. There are some who have said that they are blue-blooded members of the NPP, but they are not in support of what is going on in the party and that they would side with Al Chemating. How will the cookie crumble in 2024? Only time will tell, but we have our guests uh, to help us assess the situation. Uh, joining me in the studio, we have uh, Dr. John Osai Kwapong. He joins me in the studio. Uh, thank you so much for your time. And then we have 
Haruna Mohammed, Deputy General Secretary of uh, the NPP. Uh, Mr. Mohammed, a very good morning to you, sir. Good morning, sir. It's good to have you join the conversation uh, this, this morning. So for, for those of us who are students of politics, who have been through all the, uh, the political literature, and uh, you look at the MPP coming to this crucial election, you want to break the eight, and yet you have so many problems. Let's take away the economy and the DDP and inflation. Let's even set all of that aside. It appears your party is fragmenting to bits right ahead of this crucial election. You've not even selected a candidate yet. How did the MPP receive yesterday Alan's resignation and this new movement that he's put together? Um, thank you very much. I'd appreciate it if you could speak up just a little bit. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for uh, this opportunity. Um, yesterday, the General Secretary of the New Party, Party, that is my boss, uh, issued a statement to the press. And he indicated in the statement that it is very unfortunate that this decision of Mr. Alan is here at this particular time. And um, the party would be uh, having a press conference uh, on a discussion that will be centered on the issues that are raised by uh, Mr. Alan that we have said that he has been a long-standing member of the New Pacific Party uh, for him to decide to perfect his membership uh, through a press uh, 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 address uh, at this point in time is something that is very worrisome, and the party um, received this with, 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 with very sad uh, uh, input, and it's very unfortunate. Um, all matters that have been raised by him will be addressed by the General Secretary at 2 p.m. at the party's headquarters. And um, I think that this is the fact that uh, it is very clear that this is the time the party is going through a lot of resilience, that the party's strength will set up to test it. This is something that has happened to every political party in the world. And specifically in Ghana, there is no political party that has not tested what is happening. And I think that once we live in a democracy, uh, Mr. Alan is entitled to his decision. Once we respect his decision, the party will take our hands on this particular matter at 2 p.m. So the MPP is a united party. We are united by the diversity of ideas and the strength of purpose. And we will still forward ahead without any stumbling block on our way in breaking the eight. That is why we have called on the rank and file of the party to stay calm and nobody should attack Alan as a person uh, because we still respect him and the party uh, will strive on the strength of democracy. You called it an unfortunate decision and like you said, uh, you want the party to remain calm. But that is not what we saw on social media. There was a, uh, so many tantrums were thrown on social media as far as this, this you know, resignation is concerned and an independent candidacy in uh, 2024. You spoke about breaking the eight, but here is Alan who feels you've not been fair to him. We recall the president, Narado Dankwe Kufuado, saying that, me frisua Alan neba. And uh, it appears that is not what is happening. Alan feels aggrieved. He feels the party has not been fair to him. And some stalwarts of your party have corroborated that. They have said, indeed, he's not been treated fairly. My question to you, why has the MPP not been fair to Alan Kwajo Trebating? He talks about intimidation, monetization of the game, basically setting him aside. And we saw that through the voting at the Superdelegates con Congress. Uh, what do you make of that? Um, uh, it's very unfortunate. Like I said, the General Secretary will be addressing all these issues. Uh, matters that he has raised in his 
first letter to the press and subsequently a letter to the party was being addressed. I had the opportunity to speak to most of those issues referring to the party's constitution. I am very happy that you have indicated that we did an election, but we did not do a selection. So an election on 26th of August went ahead to put that indicate the position of the new patriotic party on the democracy that we all look out for. Remember, the new patriotic party is a conservative party. It is not a socialist party, whereby there is that point that when this person is doing, this person can, where you just pick anybody at all. So I can't, I would not be able to understand when you made a statement that uh, the current president said that Ms. Chiswa Alan Neba. I don't think that this was said at a conference or this was said by National Council or this was said. We are but but you do you do admit you do admit that the president you know suggested that you, you do admit. I, I have not heard him. I heard you say, and that is why I'm restating what you said. You say so, you've not heard Mr. President say that before in I, the past. I, 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 I did not hear that. I just heard you say. I see. And I'm just making reference to the point that the NPP is a conservative party. It's not a socialist party, and we still stand on the values of the New Patriotic Party. And at 2 p.m., the general secretary will lay to bear the facts, and we would move ahead to seek the media on the right information to use for this particular decision that has been taken by uh, a, a, a former leading member of our party. <laughs> uh, at least from what we know now, uh, he is going to pour sand in your Gary so to speak, as far as the MPP. If you look at the crowd that, you know, embraced him yesterday at the Mervyn Pick Hotel, those who thronged the place, the commentary we've seen, some members of your party who already are beginning to show face, so to speak, for Alan Chebating. Yesterday I heard, um, is it SK Boafo? One, one, one of your party stalwarts, I'll just have to uh, recollect his name, who basically was throwing his support behind Alan Chemating. And your party is somewhat categorical on that. Uh, basically, once they do something like that, it means they've also removed themselves, resigned from your party. In the end, what, if, if I may just land, if I may just land. In the end, uh, the thinking is that Alan is going to whittle away votes from whoever wins the the flag bearership, the race in the MPP. Is that something the MPP is ready for? It is early days yet. Um, there is small time to election 2024, and you may see that the MPP will pull a surprise. Who knows what will happen? Let's wait and listen to the general secretary. The MPP has gone through a number of times, uh, several of them and we have come out victorious. We are not going to undermine Mr. Alan Tramantin or any other person that feels the same way that he feels. This party is a united party, and we believe that we will come out with a great message, uh, 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 and that will bring everybody on board for us to forge ahead for victory 2024. If it were a splinter group in the NDC, I'm sure you'd be quick to say that it would impact uh, that party. You seem to be running away from the fact that, I mean, Alan is a juggernaut, a juggernaut, I should say, in your party, and he's moving away. He, he placed number three in the superdelegates uh, conference. If he runs away, if he moves away, he moves away with some votes. Is, is that not a palpable reality that we can all grasp? I, I like your line of questioning, but I wish I would have gone ahead to have um, a claim discussion on this matter. Uh, but once I work directly under the general secretary, I will give your, your platform a very good respect uh, by making sure and repositioning myself that I would wait until the general secretary makes a statement and I will give you the full facts 
and what is contained in the party's constitution and the files of the new party. All right. Uh, just, just hold for me. Um, there's just a little bit I want to run by you. So just hold for me briefly. Uh, let me bring in Corby Mensa, Professor Corby Mensa, uh, who also joins the conversation. Prof, a very good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? I am well. It's been a while since we had, you know, a bit of a chit chat. You've you've been Absolutely. too busy. <laughs> very very busy, Ben. And anyway, then you have been busy as well. Right. Uh, he, of course, is with the University of Ghana Business School. You are a political marketer as well, right? Absolutely. Awesome. How do you how would you place this second resignation of Alan Chabating? This is not the first time he has, you know, stepped away from the fray. But this time, it appears to come at a very consequential moment. The MPP is hoping to, to break the eight. Things are not going well for the party. Uh, there are factions, so to speak, within the party. And now he's saying he's going independent. What does all of this mean for the MPP? Right, thank you. Uh, uh, immediately, I can say that uh, for the MPP, if there was any belief that they could break the eight, I think this really nails it that it's not going to be possible uh, why because you, you're Kenya saying you're know. saying that just because alan is going independent if he follows through the mpp cannot by any stretch of imagination win election absolutely. 2024 absolutely they were even going to struggle um if they had even you know voted alan for example uh, but suddenly once alan was out of the race they were not i had always said that if you look at the uh, certain theories, uh, suddenly Paumia is not the kind of person that they could break the eight with. People are unfortunately uh, very you know, disenchanted by his leadership. Uh, of course, somebody would argue that it's actually you know, uh, the president in you know, Nanado, but Baumia was the you know, poster boy, as we would say, for most of the government flagship especially from the economic perspective, and he has disappointed big time. Now, with that in place, uh, you would think that they would have perhaps Alan um, uh, to actually headline their political party if they believe that they could break age. Now, immediately, Alan pulled out of the MPP. Any shred of belief, I think, is gone completely. Uh, why am I saying that? Uh, as I said, he perhaps had a certain you know, aura around him he could perhaps push the argument that he had a new vision. Uh, of course, somebody would say that he has served the government, but he was not in the pole position as Baumia was. And so for him to pull out, I certainly believe that he's going to whittle away kind of some votes in Ashanti region, particularly where he has a very strong following, but across the country because he had run as a candidate, as a flag bearer candidate for a period of time as a, as a result, he's actually mobilized people. He has a certain following. And then, of course, the people who perhaps would be floaters or would be independent voters might think that perhaps a, a third candidate, you know, along the lines of MPP, NDC, and of course, even uh, CPP and PNC uh, could be, you know, a, a, an attractive choice to, 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 to make. So I think that if there is any iota of belief that MPP can break the eight, this is certainly not, you know, the news that they want to hear. In other words, this puts the nail in the coffin of breaking Absolutely. the eight. Absolutely. Absolutely. It does. Completely. As a political marketer, is there any way the elephant can overcome the butterfly? Um, maybe Alan has chosen the butterfly because of floating voters, maybe to attract them. You know how a butterfly, you know... Uh, moves every now and then from flower to flower. But uh, is there any way the MPP could still make some ground and overtake Alan Shamating in terms of any votes that he may claw away? Let's look at it. If Alan even gets 5% or 10% of the national votes, what would that mean for the MPP? As I said earlier, uh, it definitely would be hurting MPP uh, when you talk about any way that they could actually get Alan, of course, coalition is possible in elections or in electoral systems. They can go into coalition with him. Uh, but I don't think that, you know, that side of coalition is the most viable one for Alan. 
I don't think that you know he or MPP rather stands in a better position uh, to to be in coalition. I think if there is anything at all, it could be NDC or the other political parties, uh, as in CPP, PNC. They can be in coalition with with uh, Allen, not the MPP, not the other way around, because the grounds based on which he left are grounds that I don't think that he would be convinced, you know, to go back. There's a, so much mistrust between him and the, the structures of the MPP. So it'd be very, very difficult to think that he would go back for a coalition. And, and by the way, if he does that, he would not speak so much well for his personality or his character, because it is the same party that you have actually pulled out. Why do you then team up as a coalition you know, with a, I think it's very difficult to justify that. So if there's any other, you know, a partnership, it could be with the other political parties as opposed to with uh, NDC. And, and, and Prof, I was just about to get to that because of how emphatic you were about the fact that the MPP couldn't win in 2024. Because if, if and that's why I brought in the case of about 10%. You know our politics. It's always said that the NDC and the MPP would have a base of about 40% apiece and then fight for the 20% in the middle. Maybe in election 2024, because of how unpopular the MPP has become, the numbers may be slightly changed. But if an now, Alan Chamating, if, 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 if uh, just, just bear me out, if an Alan Chamating were to get anything between 7% to about 15%, okay, that could, pull, that could bring to bear some sort of runoff, in which instance he would now become the kingmaker, so to speak, and he could side with whichever for, you know, end, whether to group with the, the Nkrumah's parties, the CPP, the PPP, and others, or to go back and support the NPP, lend the support for whatever the gains or the boons may be. It's a reality. Well, uh, firstly, I don't actually support the theory that the parties control 40% as a staple. I, no. I, I just said that as a not, not necessarily yeah. concrete. I, I, no, no, it's not you saying it. I mean, it's an argument that even the political parties put forward. Uh, it is not a staple. Uh, it is such that people move in between these political parties. Uh, the reason I'm saying that they themselves do not have membership records for us to be able to tell that they have a standing one million people in their books. The political parties do not have, apart from their staunch you know, members who actually go for uh, meetings, etc., the, the activists, etc. The political parties, I don't think, have really a certain document that says that you have a standing one million people in your books. As a result, use it for calculation to say you're about 40% of the vote. I think that for every eight years, people actually circulate between you know, uh, uh, what could they move between this, these two political parties depending on the level of disappointment. And surely we have been disappointed every eight years. Perhaps four years, we are okay with that. We want to give them a chance. And then in a, at eight years, we're tired. And then we move across. So that is what has been happening. I think that you're right to say that if Alan actually claws a certain in a percentage of vote, he could actually send the election into runoff, which is possibility. I have actually argued that NDC shouldn't be too happy in the meantime because they have to really do the analysis. Look, people who had, uh, I said that people who had naturally, who are not party voters, for example, who are independent or floating voters, we have all experienced NDC government, we have experienced MPP government, so we know what it, what, what it means, all right? Of course, in campaigning, they will tell us fresh things. So that could actually be the mediator or the, uh, the moderator in it, you know, in terms of how we perceive them, all right? But imagine that somebody who had tasted these two governments and Alan Chamantena drops in. Such a person can be in a dilemma, thinking, should I still vote MPP or NDC? Or I should give my vote to Alan Chamantena? Of course. You know, the, the other political parties, I don't want to say smaller parties, but the P, a CPP, PNC, usually would have their core basis voting for them, all right? The floaters perhaps might think that I need to send these parties a certain signal and then vote Alan Chamantin. So it is difficult for the two parties, very difficult for MPP, 
But for NDC, it is tricky for them as well. I think that they need to analyze the scenarios very well to be very certain how the strategy would be. Otherwise, it is not the only, uh, the MPP is the only party that Alan Chamantin could put, you know, the sun in their gallery. It could also affect NDC. Well. So he could imperil, he could imperil both the NDC and the MPP, and both of them have really? to be cautious. But, but let me Absolutely. ask you this. Depending is, on the campaign even. Is Alan different in any way? I mean, can he sell himself as anything other than a discontent, grumbling stalwart of the MPP? You know, some have said that, Dr. Baumia, what is he bringing differently? He's with the administration. He's been there through these eight years, seven plus years. There's nothing new. Uh, same can be said of Alan. What do you think? Look, the, if you look at the, the I mean, the voter, uh, the voter population, the, quite a lot of them who perhaps never or haven't felt uh, a certain, you know, performance of Alan, uh, of course, he was prominent in uh, MPP first. Uh, what I mean by MPP first is that 2000 election for the first time. So he was prominent then. In this particular administration, he hadn't been prominent. You barely hear him speak. You barely see him. And so uh, the issue of recency cannot be likened to Alan as you would to Baumia, for example. And so the perception that people have for him is more, I think, from a good side in terms of his gentle, and even if you talk about from the bad side, people might think that he's a laid back, all right? And so his performance during the campaign would be a lot more of a communication to the new emerging voters, all right? Perhaps the old guards know him, and so they could be influenced by what they know about him, but there are so many young people who I don't think have enough knowledge, enough memory about who Alan is. And so his campaign will be so crucial to these people in terms of how he communicates, in terms of how he sounds, in terms of his vision, in terms of his program, in terms of his honesty, his competences, etc. So for me, there are quite a lot of newness, you know, with Alan's candidature as we do with uh, 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 what do you call Baumia, for example, because the recency on Baumia is so huge. I mean, a lot more people can write a huge, a long, a very long essay about Baumia than they can about Alan. Prof, um, I know it's your, your time is up. You have to take leave of us. Let me just sneak in this bit. What do you foresee to be the impact of Alan on votes, especially in the Ashanti region, vis-a-vis -vis his show in the Superdelegates Congress? He earned a paltry 10 votes from the superdelegates, if I recall, in the Ashanti region. That is one. And two, do you think Alan would ever make a, you know, a good president? And, um, or is he destined never to become president? What, what is your take? Earlier, I had Afil Money here, and he, he is categorical that uh, this means Alan is never going to be president. Your take? Well, I think you had two questions. And is he ever going to be president or would he, be, would, would he make a good president? I mean, I, I'm careful to say because, look, the confidence we had in Nanado, you have no idea. I used to call him the last Democrat standing, especially when uh, KB Asante actually you know, left. I thought that he was a consummate Democrat. He would be amazing president. And uh, not only me, quite a lot of us have been disappointed. And so we can judge people by their characters and say they will be fantastic fathers, which Alan is, fantastic, you know, uh, gentleman. He really, you know, uh, sort of, he hastes in terms of, he hesitates in terms of uh, uh, coming to speak. I, I mean, he broods over things, you know, before he says them. So consummate, you know, gentleman, very you know, critical in his perspectives. Uh, to be president is something else. As Mahama said, you know, you wait until you become president. So I will not stick my neck out, you know, confidently as I would want to because of his characteristics. Uh, but we have seen evidences that we have to tone down in our expectations for people. Uh, would he ever become president? I think that it depends on the dynamics. Look, people are even for a certain third force, not necessarily a political party. 
people have been disappointed by these two political parties. They say that all the time. Uh, you also have, you know, the campaign to deal with. Can he really mount a rigorous, very competitive political campaign that could tell people that, whoa, maybe there's something else that we have to look out for? Mm. It is all in the campaign. And I think that, you know, going, I mean, uh, leading to the time, we'll have a glimpse of whether he could really shake the foundations of this geopoly and perhaps insert himself or uh, assert himself as the president of this country. The first part so was about the impact on, on, on votes in the Ashanti region. Quickly on that so we can... Absolutely, he's going to whittle away. I have said that he's likely to make sure that MPP doesn't get a 75% plus. Definitely, he's going to whittle away. Now, M if you look at the, the, the figures, MDC is getting 15, 20% plus in Ashanti region. Uh, when MPP gets less than 75%, uh, they are losing the election. With Alan, certainly they are not going to get 75%. So certainly he's going to take away quite a lot from the Ashanti region. Prof, thank you so much for your time with us uh, this morning. Professor Kwame Mensa is with the University of Ghana Business School. He's a political marketer as well. He joined us for that conversation. Let me come into the studio right before I go back to uh, Haruna Mohammed. Haruna, are you still with us? Mr. Mohamed, can you hear me? Okay. Coming into the studio now. You've, you've heard it from both ends. What do you make of, I mean, the, the discussion so far? Alan has resigned. I'm going independent. Mm -hmm. But what does that really mean from where you sit? You know, um, in, in, in political science, we borrowed this idea from, um, from economics that says that if you are a consumer of a particular product um, and you are dissatisfied, you have three options. Exit, which is, look, I'm out. Or voice, meaning You'll I'm not happy, I'll talk about the issues, but I'm still in. Um, and then there's the loyalty bit. Um, there are issues, but I see no evil, I hear no evil, I'm still in, etc., etc. Right? Uh, so that's the spectrum. Um, in the, at the end of the day, uh, Mr. Chemating has chosen the other end of the spectrum, which is I have issues, I'm aggrieved, I'm dissatisfied, I'm not sure where this party is going, it's changed, etc., etc. Um, uh, therefore, I'm out. I, I mean, for someone who has really been with the party, you know, for, um, for all of these years, for me, his decision to actually leave and then contest as an independent um, is a bit of a, of a disappointment. Okay. Um, I do understand the issues and the challenges that he has, but um, party stalwarts, right? Those who have, quote-unquote, invested their sweat and blood, so to speak, in trying to build a political party, um, don't just leave the party right but, but, they, but, they exercise voice and they try to as best as they can look if you look at um you know if you look at uh, president de Kufuado's performance in mpp primaries right prior to becoming president one of the things that i always observed was this reward for his loyalty to the party right I suspect that the delegates always looked at him and said, through the good times, through the bad times, he always stuck with us. And political parties, um, particularly the MPP, do reward, do reward, uh, do reward that. That's one. Um, if you also look at uh, Mr. Chemating's performance in MPP primaries, since his really best showing in, you know, in the lead up to the 2008 elections, mm. you do see a decline you know, in the number of votes he's been getting. Now, you know, it could probably be because of the candidates he was contesting against. I, when the primary started, I always described Mr. Chemating respectfully as the heir apparent who may never be crowned king. You know, you brought up this whole idea of, you know, the president once said, Mifriswa, Alan is next, right? Um, and even in this campaign, you could hear them use the narrative, a Drew Missile. Be that as it may, all of that dynamic changed in 2008 
with the entrance of Dr. Baumia into the party. Mm. And you have to give it to the vice president, right? I mean, he, even in his short time in the party, he has really made inroads. He's built himself, he's built for himself a strong base of support, you know, a core constituency within the party. Um, if you think back to the 2012 petition, he was essentially, you know, the face and voice of making the case for the Because NPP. he was one of those, you know... Precisely, in right? The, in, the, in the case, exactly. in the frame. But, Alan's name was not there. But even then, right? Mm. I mean, and even if you look at 2016, you know, who was really making the case for the election of the MPP based on, you know, uh, the economic situation. You know, whether you agreed with his assertions, um, whatever he, he, you know, he said or didn't say. He has been there, you know, for the party. And even as things have not been going well, as we all know, for this government, he's still taking the punches. Um, if, you, if you observe, if you look at social media, and he but, but he, he doesn't have a choice. He, he, he has he, a choice. He ran his mouth on right. the economy. Right. He was touted as the economic whiz kid. Right. Now we're in the, the economic abyss. Okay? Precisely. Obviously, he's going to be one of the targets. But, but you speak about stalwarts. Yeah. Is there a bigger stalwart in the MPP than Alan Chebati, for example, in terms of character, in terms of longevity? Mm -hmm. How long has Baumia, Dr. Baumia right. been in the system? So right. do you think then that Alan Chebati mm -hmm. shot himself in the foot by being the docile, laid-back character that he has been when Dr. Baumia was fronting, putting his face out there. Do you think Alan, by, because in the past it has worked for him, stay calm, so you will not get so much to say, but now it appears he's lost that footing on the ground. Is that what, has that been his undoing? I don't think his, his, his character, as you mentioned, you know, cool, calm, laid back, I don't think that has been his undoing. I suspect that leaving the party, you know, the first time, um, yes, he did come back and all of that. But I, I think leaving the party the first time sort of chipped away at some of that, is he really with us? And, you know, if it goes bad or if it doesn't go his way, um, then what does that mean for him and his relationship with us? So I think that has had some lingering um, you know, some lingering effect. And as I mentioned, in comes the, you know, longevity is important, but people can have an impact and do a lot for a party even in a short space of time. And I think that is what torpedoed uh, that narrative of longevity at Dumiso, right? In the sense that um, he had to contend with um, a very popular vice president in his party, or should I say a very popular person within his party, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, it was not easy trying to um, contest against uh, Dr. Boy, and especially to most of the establishment voices, for one reason or the other, were backing the, the vice president. So he was really up against um, um, uh, an uphill task. Um, and in, in, in that regard, there's this um, bit that has circulated uh, purported to have been penned by B.J. B. Darocha himself, mm -hmm. a stalwart of the party, mm -hmm. the first time Alan left mm -hmm. the party. Uh, B.J. Darocha communicated mm -hmm. in a letter to the party, if this can be corroborated, mm -hmm. that he is being too plaintive, so to speak, and that it would be a bad and dangerous pre precedent for the NPP to allow any member to dictate to the party. And that welcoming him back was not in the best interest of the party. If I may read the very last part of it, it says, in light of this, it is my considered view that it will not be in the best interest of the MPP to receive Mr. Alan Chabatin back into the party's fold. He will become a disruptive factor, a disruptive factor in the party, a stumbling block, a loose cannon. The party has an election to win. We should concentrate our efforts on the task ahead and let him go his way in peace. Um, and this is all the way from April 25th, Friday, 2008. Now, here we are. How many years after that? Um, 15 years mm -hmm. after that, mm -hmm. Alan mm -hmm. is 
moving aside again. But this time, the consequences are going to be more mm -hmm. grave mm -hmm. for the MPP mm -hmm. as they attempt mm -hmm. to break the eight. Mm -hmm. Was B.J. Darocha right then? I, I'm sure at that point, he felt, you know, again, so on the spectrum, right, if you end up choosing exit, then it raises the question of the extent of your loyalty to the party. But and, if, if things are not working... I understand that. And I said, there are some who then may say, this doesn't show a sense of loyalty, and don't ever come back. But at the same time, political parties are also smart enough to recognize that reconciliation um, is a good thing, right? Um, that if you can... You know, if you can welcome some people back or you can ensure that you always have a united front, even with the people who are very aggrieved, you know, with the party, you try your best. So I'm sure with good reason and good intention, that is why they welcomed him, you know, back into the fold. Who knows whatever conversations must, may have gone. But, but it must have been in the party's interest as well because he has Pre a, a constituent, precisely. a following. So it also was in the best interest of, you know, of the party to get him back. And then whatever conversations may have happened in the background between you know, key voices, probably certain party, respected voices, et cetera, et cetera. They just, you know, it was, it's okay, we've reconciled, you know, let's all become friends again and he's back. But it just looks like as time went on, and again, 2020, as we are going into 2024, um, primaries crop up again. Um, some of these issues uh, come back again. And this time, he says, you know, he's, he just doesn't even say I'm out. He actually says I'm out and I'm going to run as an, as, as, as an independent. If you look at Alan Chamating, some say that there have been attempts. I listened yesterday mm -hmm. to um, some officials of the MPP. And... The question was thrown as to whether attempts had been made because, I mean, this has been filtering through. Mm -hmm. It's been in, in the grapevines for a while that he was going to resign and that he would go independent. Whether there had been attempts from the party to talk to him mm -hmm. and get him to rescind, even as far as the vice president trying to. And the response was that, indeed, there had been such, uh, you know, interactions, but it was clear that he had dug his heels in and this is what it has come to. Um, what do you think? Do you think that that then means this is a one-way ticket? If you go, don't come back. Is that what it means for Alan? Especially going independent. Um, I think this is really, um, you know, uh, the, the, the sort of the divorce between Alan and the, uh, and the MPP. Um, I, don't, I don't foresee him returning to the party not especially for some of the things that he said yesterday in his announcement, right? And then two, if, you know, this looks like it's something that is going to have quite an impact in 2024. So imagine the extent to which it has an impact and imagine what it does, for example, in a stronghold like the Ashanti region, like Professor Kobi Mensah was saying. Uh, let's say it because of the Alan factor, the traditional at least 75% that the MPP gets in the Ashanti region, they don't get it um, and they end up losing the election. I'm sure they would attribute part of their loss to the fact that not only did he leave the party, he also went independent. So I don't think um, uh, there's a return ticket uh, to, the, uh, to the MPP. And for me, when you walk, the, the things you say when you walk away, uh, doesn't even allow you in good conscience. Because now he's cutting the party. Precisely. To shreds, basically. Exactly. So why would you even that. want to come back anyway, someday? Mm. You know? but, but interestingly, after all that is said and done, he also says, look, should I become president, I will be the kind of leader who will accommodate people from both the MPP mm -hmm. and the NDC. I would even appoint ministers and others from these two parties. That, that creates quite a picture, doesn't it? And what do you think? If 2024's election, presidential election, goes to a runoff, do you honestly think the MPP will not, and if it is on the back of the votes that Alan pulls away from both parties, but likely more from the MPP, are you suggesting the MPP will not extend an olive branch to Alan to get him back into the fray and get that support? Um, 
I, 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 I don't think. I think they, they would. Well, I mean, as they say... Political politi expediency. Of course. You know, as they say, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, politicians will do anything, even if they have to sell their grandmothers for a dollar, right? Uh, we tend to say that in the U.S. So uh, I can see if he becomes like that real kingmaker, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think they would really thumb their noses and say, you know what, um, we don't care whichever way it goes. They may not do it publicly, uh, but I suspect that they might uh, try. The, the question is, would he extend them that same grace, knowing that he has a set of grievances in which he thinks and feels that the party didn't extend him uh, the, same, uh, the same grace? Uh, would he turn around and endorse the NDC in a runoff? Um, you that, know. that is also a, a far, I a mean, far -fetched it is, idea. It so is he may a real stretch of imagination precisely. to imagine that he would do that. So he may probably say, look, my voters, choose who you... But again, we are a year away from the election, and in politics, anything can happen. Politics does sometimes make for very strange bedfellows. What so, do you think, though, about his approach to the NDC and the MPP? I, if I become president, I'll bring in people from both parties. I mean, that's a noble idea. I mean, if you, are, if you are truly an independent candidate, it means that you can cross the partisan lines and work with anybody, right? But, I mean, we've had, we've, had our, we've had our politicians promise a whole lot of things. We've had our politicians say, you know, you know I'll, be a, I'll be bipartisan, I'll work with, you know, person X, person Y, I can work with anybody. Uh, but then we also then end up seeing how they behave uh, once they are in office, once they have the power. I'm okay. not saying that that is going to be in the case of Alan, right. but I'm just saying that uh, we've, had and we've had some of these promises before which didn't you know, materialize. Right. Let me bring in Dr. Richard Amwakuba. Um, he is a political stalwart. He has lectured in politics. He's a stalwart of the MPP. Doc, a very good morning to you. Good morning to you. It's been a while. I hope you, you've been keeping well. Uh, yes, indeed. I, I'm okay. I didn't touch much. Right. Um, in recent times, I have followed your rhetoric on, for example, Dr. Mahamdou Baumia. You have said that uh, even his becoming vice president was not, if you look at the party structures and the processes, was not in the best of taste. For, to talk of his becoming a flag bearer of the party. Then you put on the other side Alan Tremating, who feels aggrieved that there was supposed to be a continuum. I allowed Nanado to go. And the agreement was that I would come after him. But now it appears the party has set him aside. What do you make of this decision to go independent, uh, to resign from the party, first of all, and go independent? Well, if you don't resign from the party, you cannot go independent. Right. So you have to do the first thing. But if, if, you're, if your people, referees, are building walls in front of you so that you cannot proceed, you must start building ladders so you can climb the walls. And that's what he has done. He climbed the wall and jumped up. They were using the primary election to stop him. So now he says, okay, you don't want me to go forward. Take your party. I'll, I'll move forward to other means. Now, I know Ghanaians, uh, uh, their imagination is not very good, no doubt, and so to speak. I'm not, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but our culture uh, predisposes us to think that if something has not happened, it can never happen. And it's not true. There's always a first time for everything. And so we've had independent people, but this is the first time we have a major candidate become an independent uh, candidate. So let's give him some time. He just announced it yesterday. And in the coming months, let's see uh, his support. Then you can assess that it's a, it's a credible, credible candidate. So then, let's not write him off right away. The so party cannot do anything to him now. I don't... If he, they go and talk to him, offer him money or whatever, and he goes back, even I will not talk, talk to him. Oh, you're saying that you feel yes. if the MPP yes. offers money or whatever sort of influence uh -huh. to Alan Chamating and he goes back, even you, you will not talk to him? No, that means that he's treacherous. And I know he's not. Okay, so Doc, this, what this means is, let me confirm from you, are you in full support of this move by Alan Chabating, and are you now throwing your support behind him? Yes. Yes, because the party I joined is, a, is not the party I see today. 
the rock started when Nanadu came. You remember, or maybe you don't. I don't want this one. I can't work with this one. I got, he brought only his, uh, his friends and family members. Then the whole thinking of the group become myopic. When something is going wrong, nobody can speak up. If you, by experience, they know. You go to cabinet meeting and you say something the president doesn't want, his anger comes on. You go now, you learn very quick. Don't speak your mind. Don't tell the truth. They tell me. I have many friends who are cabinet ministers. They tell me. So you keep quiet, take your pay, and do whatever you can do. That's it. The country will never go right. And that is what is happening. We are on our knees. We are beggars. You understand? And uh, the, the debt keeps going up. Once you run around seeing the Pope and whatever else, the debt is going up. 579 billion now. Printing money to destroy the economy just because you, that will give you a little space to get some worthless cash to pay people in the country. You did that, the whole country is going to the tube. This is what has happened. For that alone, for that alone, it's enough to impeach the person. Let, 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 the president. Mm, uh, Take him to task. He and the governor and the finance. Uh, you, you, you look at everything that has happened. I have this message. Interestingly, I'll just weave it into the conversation. Simon Kaja says, a man with nothing to lose has the freedom to take risks and chase his dreams. Alan has nothing to lose now. Exactly. What do you want him to do? Just fall down and die? No. This is an avenue. At least he can express himself. He can find out whether he really has support or he does not what people are saying, not what his own party people are trying to do. And someone <laughs> says it's, it's, it's the first showdown. But, but the, <laughs> the point is, let's face political reality. As the Daily Graphic captures it, Alan's third force agenda, fast or reality, is this a reality? Can Alan become president? That, that is the main... Yes. Look at, looking, I, I mean, the NDC and the MPP are in there. I can tell you emphatically, yes. Look, there are so many situations that can happen. But I can assure you, for, by his candidature, Paumia is never going to be president. That is what has happened. That is one thing for sure I can say. So you're basically saying, you're basically saying that the MPP, once Alan has done this, the MPP cannot win election 2024. It cannot, unless Alan himself wins. That is what is happening. Because if Kennedy loses the primary, which most likely he would, by the machinations we've seen, even if he loses fairly, Baumia comes, there will be two people drawing the votes of Ashanti Lee. That spells trouble for MPP. Because any time MPP gets about 5% of Ashanti region vote, they win. And it will not be this court. For Alan to take that five percent away, I, I will say he'll take a whole lot more away. If he doesn't win, then Maumia will lose for sure. That's what I see. This is statistics, not because I want it, but this is what's going to happen. So he has become a spoiler for MPP, the very opposite of what the National Council wanted. But they didn't see far. They got the opposite of what they were looking for. So at this juncture, let's say we go into election 2024 and there is a runoff. You would not support Allen uh, if, if the MPP were to come back and say, you know what, you've become the kingmaker now. You are from, your roots are from here. Support us. You, you would not support that call. No, no. That means he's a rascal too. That would mean he's a rascal too. Is that what you said? Yes. And I know he's not a rascal. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Mm. You don't go and make profound statements and then you go back, you backtrack and say, oh, I'm sorry, you talk to me, so what? Said you, said you, a uh, fact, you so you what, can't someone, what, what, what? No. No. Stand your ground. Believe in where you stand. Speak the truth. You have spoken the truth. They have not treated you well. They are using tricks and shenanigans to, for one candidate to come forward. It's all true. Don't we know? When Kennedy said, show down, oh, National Council, call him, call him here, come and answer. What? You have not seen Baumia campaigning for, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Wuntini, 
campaigning for Baumia as if he's the uh, uh, what campaign chairman for Baumia. Is that how it's done? The referee has taken time. Is that how it's done? No. Then the National Council goes, oh, there's nothing in the Constitution that says uh, party officials cannot support them. What? Are you saying you are changing your mouth now and midstream? This is disingenuous. This is dishonest. Unacceptable. Shameful. That is what is happening. And we are not children. Some, so people, saying, some people are saying this is the first showdown. Kennedy and Japan promised uh, the president and the vice a showdown. Some are saying... This is the first uh, showdown from Alan Indeed. Tremartin. Indeed. But, but let's, look at, let's look at the other side of the coin. Alan has stepped aside from the MPP before. Like I was reading a short while earlier. Then we heard from BJ Darocha, who actually said, don't accept him back. But the party did. Of course, he, came, he, he comes with a lot of clout and all of that. I could read for you, but I think it would, be, it would just be an add-on to time. He was taken back in 2008, and now we're here. He's at the crossroads, and he's disengaging from the MPP once more. Some say that is treacherous, and that he is not loyal to the MPP. He is loyal to himself. Uh, this then means it's a one-way ticket. There's no coming back for Alan, right? Well, yes. That's what I've been saying. It's a one-way ticket. You cannot be loyal to a party without being loyal to yourself first. You have to believe in what you are saying, in what you are made of. If you believe strongly that you've been mistreated, or you have been not just mistreated, you understand? The, the, the list of uh, grievances go on and on and on and on. Then either you resign or do something else. And now he has chosen to do something else. Let's give him the chance to see how that something else is going to pan out before we say, oh, he doesn't have a chance and he doesn't have the consequences or whatever. One day, can you get a consequence in one day? So give him time. Let's see how, what happens. You'll be shocked that so many people may come in and support him, and that will governize his campaign. It will be nationwide acceptable that an independent candidate can win. I have no doubt of that. No doubt at all. He said tougher times demand tougher decisions. This is what brought Obama. Who would have thought a black man in America, the time he became president, would become president? Nobody would vote for him. But the things were bad, real hard. And so when they looked at the alternative, he was the best choice, and they voted for him. So, so just, I mean, right before you go, just briefly, some 20 seconds, if you like. So there's no breaking the eight, and Dr. Baumia Kennedy of Japan can kiss their presidential ambitions goodbye, right? Pretty much. Except it's a caveat. If Kennedy beats Baumia in the primary, then there's a possibility of him being the winner. That's the thing, because I don't think Ken uh, Alan is upset with Kennedy. In fact, they are on the same side, being upset about the shenanigans that is going on. And so it's entirely possible. If Alan sees that his support is not as big as he would like it to be, he can throw his support behind Kennedy if he is a candidate. Okay. The problem is, would they allow him to come forward, or is he going to be stopped in this family, whether uh, by, by, by fairness or not? I don't know. So, Doc. there are still some questions to be answered, so let's wait for all right. Uh, Doc, we're so grateful that you took the time to join us this morning. Dr. Richard Amwakuma, he's a political scientist and uh, a stalwart of the new patriotic party. Coming back into the studio as we wrap the conversation. So you have um, numerous viewpoints, but there seems to be this convergence on the fact that with what Alan has done, the MPP likely wouldn't win election 2024, regardless of whom they present. But the point has also been made, maybe better with Kennedy at Japan than Dr. Mahamadou Baumia. In conclusion, what are your, your thoughts moving forward for the new Patriotic Party and how maybe the party should approach dealing with uh, this situation as they speak to us at 2 p.m.? Well, they were already going into a very difficult election year. Um, the political winds are blowing against them, particularly if you look at the state of the economy and other matters that have aggrieved Ghanaians. So... Life is already difficult for them as they prepare for 2024. 
then in comes the Alan factor that adds another layer um, of, of, of difficulty. At this point, um, I, I don't see them, I don't think they are obligated to treat Alan uh, with, uh, with soft gloves because he is no longer, quote unquote, one of them, right? So I'm sure they would, pun quote unquote, punch him the same way they would punch any political opponent. I mean, when he was, when he initially expressed grievances about, you know, the, the super delegate Saturday, at that point, I could see why they would be very careful in how, you know, they respond to all of those things. But at this point, um, he has left the party. He's, you know, he's essentially a political adversary because he wants the same thing that they want in 2024. So I do see them responding very, very forcefully to the charges that he's, you know, he's raised about, you know, uh, the party. And I'm sure in 2024, as one of the contestants, they will treat him just the same way as they will treat any other uh, contestant because now he poses a, you know, a threat to the party. I mean, if you look at the competitive nature of our elections, even if he takes 3 4% away, right, assuming that, you know, I mean, he's going to draw, you know, he's definitely going to draw some MPP votes. Uh, I mean, even if he chips away 3 4%, that, that could be the undoing. Yes, the that, that could party. definitely be the undoing um, um, of the party. And again, like I said, they are already going into a very difficult election year. And now another layer of difficulty has been added onto, um, onto 2024 for them. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. John Osai Kwapong, for joining the conversation uh, this morning. We also had Hauna Mohammed, Deputy General Secretary of the MPP. We had Professor Kobi Mensah. Uh, of the UGBS, University of Ghana Business School, also a political marketer, uh, joining the conversation. Then we also had Dr. Richard Amwakuba, a political scientist and a stalwart of the NPP. I guess it's fitting to ask, is it game, set and match for the NPP ahead of election 2024? Time will tell. But up next, stay with us, because having spoken on the political front, we'll also be heading to Buipe, as we look at the recent flooding there with over 1,500 people displaced and in miserable conditions. That discussion up next on The AM Show.